Greetings, saints. I'm Bishop Larry H. Jordan, Sr., and welcome to Moving People in the Right Direction. We're going to go directly into the Word of God. The topic is a continuation of testing your faith. God is testing the faith of not only this congregation, but congregations all over the world. He's testing their faith to see if they actually believe in what he has said. I believe everything that the Bible says will come to pass. Whatever Jesus said, it will come to pass. Let me start with this. As your pastor, I have the mind of Christ. That's what the word said. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Since I have the mind of Christ, the word of God says, follow me as I follow Christ. All right, so that's an examination period. That's a period where we can agree in how the pastor conducts himself, not only in word, but in character as well, that I can follow him or I can follow her. Also, the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I believe in the power of the Bible that as I read the word of God, I will not lose confidence in it. So I'm gonna walk in it, I'm gonna live by it, and I'm going to study it so that I can be approved. Now we are walking by faith. We're not walking by what we see, we're walking by faith. Lord Jesus, I don't see you, but I know that you sit on the right hand of the Father. Father God, I look forward to the day that through the changing from this flesh into a celestial body that you have created for the angels, that I can dwell in your presence because a glorified body can deal with the brightness of God. But Father, while I am here, let your brightness shine through my heart let it shine through my character, and may my fruit always be available to be an example for the people that are following me. We're going to go to the book of Matthews, chapter 22. Now, I want you to listen to what's being read. This is very, very important. That's Matthews, chapter 22, and it's going to be a little long reading. But it's going to be a little lengthy because I want you to hear what God is saying to the church. It's Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treating them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now, this is what the Lord put on my heart for you. All Christians and converts are called to the wedding of Christ. 
You are personally invited by the Lord Jesus Christ. You have already received an invitation. Yet Christians make light of the invitation. They make excuses not to attend the wedding. People wasn't listening to prepare for the wedding. They would rather fight against the pastor and not obey the word of God. Therefore, the pastor sends out laborers into the harvest to get plenty of people. There are some people who will come to the wedding with the wrong garment and they will be cast out. All right, so now let's look at the people that the Lord want us to bring to the wedding since some Christians don't want to obey God. This is a testing of our faith as to how we're going to reach people. Go to, uh, what is that? That's, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 26. Because chapter 22 of Matthew is actually telling us to do what 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 is saying. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Continue. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Now go to Matthews chapter 9, verses 37 through 38. It's important that we follow this to see what our mission is as the Lord moves us the same way he moved Gideon. We are going to defeat the devil and we are going to win souls that know nothing about Jesus Christ. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, the Lord is instructing us. The harvest is plentiful. I feel this in my spirit. I feel it like never before that the harvest is plentiful. But now we have laborers that don't take it serious when Jesus is saying, I am testing you to see your love for people. I am testing you to see where your heart is for me. We can't just keep trying to recycle Christians. Remember what Matthew chapter 22 was saying. As believers, we have been invited to the wedding feast. You had an invitation. You are invited. We have converts that have just come to know God. We have people that have failed the Lord. We have people that are inconsistent in the Lord, that consistently make excuses not to do Ephesians 5 and 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So church, you have been engrafted in the knowledge of God to understand what the will of the Lord is. There has to be a hunger pertaining to the times that we're living in to get as many people as we can into the kingdom of God. So now you're called. And there are people in other churches that are called, but they're dormant. They're not consistent. They're not powerful. They don't have the spirit of the Lord in them leading them and guiding them as the promise that Jesus gave us when he said he will send you the comforter. My job is to push you 
to encourage you through the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel that God says. And at times we just don't think that we have to continue to move forward in this gospel that's being preached because we're used to just Sunday. And see, this is why we have to organize to do more than what we're doing right now. Now, many are called. There are a lot of people that are converted, that have come to church. They are called, but this is the problem. Because of their inconsistency, because of the way that they serve God, because their mind and their heart is not sold out, they don't pay a price. Listen to this. They become a foolish virgin. So now their oil has decreased instead of increased. I want you to understand how Jesus is evaluating how we think. Okay, so now you have some people that just don't want to labor. But the harvest is there. It's plentiful for us to come and to bring and to win people to Christ. So now the Lord is saying, all of you all have been invited to this wedding feast. But because you keep making excuses, when I come, I cannot choose you to enter into my kingdom. Now, the scripture talks about a garment that was bad. It was the wrong garment that someone came um, and was sat down amongst those that he invited to go to the wedding feast. And he says, listen, I can't use you. You can't come because you have on the wrong garment. Go to, go to the book of Jude. And we're going to go to, it's only one, one chapter, so we're going to go from verse 20 to 23, the book of Jude. Because we're going to see at the end of this verse that a garment that is bad represents sin. But see, we have to pray in the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit moans and groans within us at times and we don't even know what we should be praying for. So the Holy Spirit has to pray for us at times. I know it does for me. So this is not just talking about you speaking and praying in tongues. This is talking about you knowing how to pray through your difficulties, through your agony, through your sufferings. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. The garment defiled by what? The flesh. Now, I want to show us something about the foundation. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse number 9, and we're going to come down to verse number 15. We're going to read, we're going to read 9 through 15. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work and what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire." 
Read verse number 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. All right. Temple of God, temple of God. Our body is the temple of God. Inside of it, we have a garment. So that means we have to take care of both. We have to take care of our temple, and we also have to take care of the white garment that's on the inside. That's our spirit. All right, God is making it clear that if we don't take care of ourselves, then we will be destroyed. Now, this is a testament of my faith. In spite of what I have gone through in my body, whatever operations I've had, heart attack and all that stuff that came with it, what I have done with myself is to make sure that I discipline my body. So now, every day for the preaching of the gospel and to lead with diligence, I make sure that I work out with my body because I have to lead you. So I can't lead you with a weak body. I have to lead you with a strong body. I cannot leave you with a weak spirit. I, mean, I can't have a garment with spots and wrinkles all over it. I have to be in shape physically and spiritually to lead you. But my vision has gone beyond you. I'm seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of people that has to be reached that God has put in my spirit that I don't even know. I see a church that's overpopulated, not underpopulated. So therefore, God tests my faith and he tells me this is exactly what I want you to do and I want you to believe in what I'm telling you to do. So I'm giving you these scriptures and I'm giving you these scriptures so that your congregation will know how to follow you as you follow Christ and they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them because you have the mind of Christ. Now your faith has to be tested as instructions are given from me by the leading of the Holy Spirit that you know that it is from God. So this is why I've given you Matthew's chapter 22 because everybody is invited to this wedding. Everybody is invited to Jesus come. He's the bridegroom. We are the church. Hallelujah. We are the bride. He's coming to get us. We have been called to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but everybody Every Christian, every convert, they stop growing to some extent. And what happens is that they don't know how to build on a foundation. Now, church is important and also building on the foundation of a church has to take knowledge and understanding. So everybody that is called is not going to be raptured because they wasn't chosen. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. It was the virgins that were just unwise. So now you all are full of oil. You have people pulling on you all the time. You're praying for them. You're speaking to them. You're acknowledging them. You know, you're spending time with them. But they won't come forth. So sometimes the physical has to step back. And the spiritual, what you don't see, has to come forward so that those prayers can cover them but you're using your temple the right way where you're not running all over the place. Lord, if you just send your word, and that what the scripture said? If you just send your word, my servant will be healed. We have to learn how to serve God. This is what you call power and demonstration. We don't have to always see the miracle. We don't always have to see the healing. You have to believe that it's taking place by sending that prayer when people consistently want to pull on you and don't want to change. You have to know how to step back. 
1 Corinthians verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. Ministers, do you hear that? Ministers, elders, do you hear that? Your labor is being depended upon. Your skill is being depended upon. Your knowledge is being depended upon. Your wisdom is being depended upon. Meetings are important for spiritual growth so that spiritual death will not enter the surroundings of the group that God has united and pulled to take into a direction to bring victory. Now, this is the way that we have to think. Every time we are called, an assembly doesn't necessarily have to be all of us in the church. It can be the women's ministry. It can be your board in the women's ministry, the board of the Believers Worship Center, elders' meetings, ministers' meetings. The assembly is coming together, director meetings. All of this is important for spiritual life and not death. Now, you have some people that say, you know, uh, I don't feel like it. Here we go again. Now you're missing out on a very important time where there's unity, there's strength. So it's by you just separating yourself and saying, well, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not coming. Or something else you want to do, I'm not coming. Now God is evaluating you to see how much of him is in you to participate in heavenly places and in dark places. In order for me to go into a dark place, believe me, I have to be spiritually inclined. I have to know exactly that the Holy Spirit is leading me to certain environments and atmospheres. I'm not stepping into nothing that God didn't lead me to go into. I don't care how popular the person is. I'm not going to that conference. I'm not going to that revival. I'm not going to that church. Don't you know that, Matt, I think that's Acts chapter 16, where the Holy Spirit forbid Paul to go into certain cities. When you read that, you'll see that certain places he could not go because God's spirit said no. Now that's the way I walk with God. I'm not taking every invitation. However, I will explain why I'm not taking the invitation. And that takes you fearing God to tell the person, I don't want to go there because I don't believe in the doctrine or I don't believe in the entertainment that's in the church. So sometimes we just lie and make up an excuse. Who wants to go to a worship and is just full of entertainment? Who wants to preach at a church? Remember I said this, I say no need to be going back down there and invite me because, you know, my ministry is not reaching these people based upon where the pastor is. The people are not going to go no further than where the pastor is. So when God orders your steps, you say that. But do you really yield yourself that God is ordering your steps? We don't walk in the spirit because most of the times the Lord is not ordering our steps. Now listen to this. According to the grace of God, and I'm speaking about me now, even though Paul is saying this, I'm talking about me. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it but let each one take heed how he builds on it. Now let's deal with this verse for a minute. I have laid the foundation. You understand the organizational structure of this ministry, those of you that come to those uh, administrating, administration meetings. All the members may not, but those directors are supposed to know exactly what to do. We have laid that out in the vision. We have policy and procedures. I'm talking to directors now. Now, all of this is supposed to produce skill for those that are under that leadership to come forth in the knowledge of the church or the knowledge of the organization. We have policies and we have procedures that everyone is supposed to adhere to. 
wise master builder. Well, vision is totally laid out, totally laid out online. You could go online and see the vision of the ministry. We used to pass out vision brochures. Remember that? But a wise person will, 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 will look, will go online and see what this church could do. We've had people go online to see what this church could do and ask for leadership. But you have to first believe that Jesus has sent me and that you're willing to do what you're supposed to do to make sure that we build a church for people to be saved. I, I'm not concerned about uh, a folk that's faking it and trying to make it. I'm, 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 I'm looking for people that, that, and God has me to look for people that want to come to church because they want to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. This is all about entering the kingdom of heaven. Don't you see what's going on around you? There will be wars, Jesus said. There will be rumors of wars. Says there will be antichrist, people that don't believe in Christ, people that don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus and go against the grain or, or kick against the pricks or the goads, as the Bible says says they don't want to bring forth the kingdom of God and don't want to see the kingdom of God the kingdom the Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent try to take it by force all right what do they try to do murder us kill us stop the progress that's that that that's the violent taking it by force it's not you being violent it's the demons and the try to stop the move of the church do you understand that You've been taught wrong. Where the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, we got to take, the kingdom of heaven is already, is already given to you. So how are you going to take it by force? It's already given. You ain't taking nothing. He, he says enter into it. You can't take it. The devil tried to take it from Jesus. He died and rose again. He died and he rose again. Violence came against him to stop him thought that they were, the devil thought he was stopping them. I'm going to take the kingdom of heaven by force. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to be valid with Jesus. I'm going to nail him to the cross. I'm going to put thorns on his head. I'm going to spit on him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to make him scared. Father, if it's possible, remove this cup from me or take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. And that's the way you have to start thinking if you want to see your family saved, if you want to see people coming back into the church that has not been in this church. I'm talking about your loved ones. You have to have the mind of Christ, but you're not doing it by yourself. We're doing it as a church. I'm an individual, but I'm going to tell you something. I depend on the gifts. So as we move forward, the scripture says this for the sake of time. It says, take heed how you build on the foundation of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. All right, love never fails. To work on a church foundation, number one, Love has to be in place. It has to be. It has to be in place. Love also has to be examined because love is the definition of God's character. And therefore, if we're going to walk in the character of God's love, then we have to know how it operates and we also have to be able to see how love is performed. You can't be in a church, in a department, in an area of ministry, and you don't know how love is to perform. So when we're taking heed how we build on the foundation, we first have to recognize love. 
If that is not in you as a minister of the gospel, period, across the board, if that is not in you as a member witnessing the gospel across the board, then you will fail because love never fails, but you will fail if you don't know how love operates. It has to be in ministry. It has to be in church. You are peculiar people. God has called you out of the world and you are peculiar people. He's given you the Holy Spirit and you are a peculiar person. That means we are different from traditionalized churches. We're, we're, we're different from, uh, uh, should I say, hypocrisy. We don't sit under apostasy. You know, we're, we're here to learn the perfect will of God and to come forth in the perfect will of God. Therefore, it is your responsibility to know love and know how to examine who you're going to participate with and examine yourself to see are you participating with God. So look at this. This is what the scripture says. I'm talking about building on the foundation. Number one, love suffers long. Now, I'll suffer long with someone. That's why I'm glad when I always see them. Family members, friends, it doesn't matter. Whoever I'm trying to reach, I love them. I love them. I'm not going to quit. I am going to consistently love the people of God. And you should have so much love in you that you don't want to see someone that is a harlot. You don't want to see an alcoholic stay there. You don't want to see a drug addict stay there. You don't want to see hate in someone. You don't want to see people that's consistently operating in strife. People that have a mind of division. Love says, listen, these are things that you suffer for people to come out of. So now we've got to say the right thing and make sure that the love of God is so powerful that through us, we even love our enemies. Now, okay, Bishop, I hear you saying that. Let me say this. When somebody say something to me wrong or they do something wrong, believe me, I attack it. Now, I want you to see how I attack it. I want you to see by scripture how I attack it. I attack it with the wisdom of God to bring, to bring, to bring victory, first of all, to my heart that I am comforted by the Holy Spirit because I attack even what was wrong. I, I said something to the person about it. I, I didn't sit down and go to somebody else, but I went to the person, I obeyed the scripture that if I'm offended by somebody else for me to go to them first, then if we can't work, work it out, then we deal with the council, okay? But however, I want you to examine this so that you would be victoriously free in your conscience how you deal with people with the knowledge of God. Okay, it says that love suffers long. Love is kind. That's coming from you. Now, love does not envy. That can't be in you. Love does not parade itself. It cannot be in you. Love is not puffed up. It cannot be in you. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Now, I'm going to start right there. All of those things is what love is not. But when you see it in other people, you have to know, how, you have to know wisely by God how to attack that. When somebody is puffed up, that means they're full of pride. They're caught up in themselves. They consistently want recognition. Look at me. Look what I got. Look what I have done. This, this is the way some Christians are. But how do you attack that? Brother or sister, humility tells me that I am not to parade myself thinking that I am something when I am nothing. The scripture says any man that thinks himself to be something when he is nothing deceives himself. So I would say don't walk in deception. 
Don't walk in deception. Do you understand what humility really is? Do you know how to humble yourself? So that you can be entreated in this kindness that I have received from God. So I'm going to suffer for you. I'm going to wait till you develop in love, brother and sister in Christ. But right now, I can't move too much further with you because you will bring more offenses than you will delivery. Now, often folk get irritated on the foundation when you're trying to develop them how to win people in the power of the spirit of the Lord and not the flesh. The flesh will always bring harm. So I pay attention to these words because love does not behave rudely. You know, I was um, talking to a pastor on, what's the day, day of Sunday? I was talking to him on Friday. And we were talking about ministry. And this is what I said. This is what I said. I said, listen, there is a scripture in the Bible. And this is love. But this is love putting things in order pertaining to the church. I said, there was a mighty man in the Bible by the name of Apollos. He was eloquent in teaching the scriptures, but he was doing it basically according to John's baptism. All right, so in other words, he was following the structure of John the Baptist, but he wasn't following the structure of Jesus Christ. So there was a couple that had a church in their home. Now listen to this now. Here comes the correction. There was a church in their home with this couple by the name of Aquila and Priscilla. And the Bible didn't say that Aquila taught Apollos by himself a better way. The Bible says that Aquila and Priscilla, husband and wife, taught him a better way. So I say, well, listen, I have a wife that I know that I know that I know that was chosen by God to walk beside me in ministry that passes this church with me. And I will not deny the anointing on her life that no Bible college gave her, that no bishop gave her, that no apostle gave her. Jesus Christ himself ordained her to preach this is what I'm saying, to preach the gospel. Because this brother was saying, we don't need to hear no more preaching. We need, we need to hear teaching. And I said, okay, you're throwing off on my wife. So let me use some love here. I can't help it if she can out-preach me. You mean to tell me that God did not put his hands on her to preach the gospel? I'm not going to dilute her purpose because of where your mind is. I'm pushing her to do the things of God. And you know what? I just ran out of time. I will see you all on next week. We're moving people in the right direction through the power of the Bible. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation or pay your tithes and offering, please go to tbwc.org slash give join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. online or on Facebook it is our pleasure to introduce our new online Christian education program the Believers Bible Institute registration is now open for individuals interested in furthering their knowledge of the Word of God please visit bbitbwc.com for more information and to view our current course offerings. Jesus said, come unto me. Join us for prayer every Friday at 7 p.m. You can submit a prayer request by emailing us at prayer at tbwc.org.